there is still much mystery that surrounds the Third Reich and Adolf Hitler. The dictator of Nazi Germany's life was kept secret at times from the German population, and during the Second World War, many people would not even know that he had a relationship with Ava Braun. As with many of those who became close to Hitler, their lives would be cut short with execution and killing. But there is one relationship that Hitler had before the Second World War that is shrouded in mystery, as is the killing or death of the woman involved. Gailey Raubel was the half-niece of Adolf Hitler, who it's believed had a close relationship with the future dictator. However, in 1931, at the age of 23, Gailey Raubel, who was described as a very beautiful girl, died in very bizarre circumstances inside of Hitler's Munich apartment, dying by gunshot. But the gunshot came from Hitler's own pistol. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Hitler's niece, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Gailey Raubel was the daughter of Leo Raubel and Angela Raubel, and was born in Linz on the 4th of June 1908. Her father died when she was just two years old, and she and her sister went with her mother when she became Hitler's housekeeper in 1925. Angela Raubel was Hitler's half-sister, and they shared a father, Alois. Whilst at the age of 17, Gailey began to spend more time with Adolf at his house and apartment, and in August 1928, she stayed with Hitler. Despite there being an age gap of 19 years, she remained in close contact with her half-uncle Adolf, and her mother was given a position as a housekeeper at the Berghof later, Hitler's mountain retreat. However, it was said that Hitler became infatuated and fell in love with his niece, and because of this, he was a constant companion of her. The pair would go to meetings together, and also go to restaurants, and stroll arm in arm in the mountains. In 1929, Hitler then took possession of an apartment in Munich, and the Raubel family went with him. Gailey moved into Hitler's apartment, and she enrolled in medicine at university in Munich. She became friends with Henriette Hoffmann, the daughter of Hitler's photographer, but Hitler would state of the two, I can sit next to young women who leave me completely cold, I feel nothing or they really irritate me, but a girl like Hoffmann or Gailey Raubel, with them, I become cheerful and bright, and if I have listened for an hour to perhaps silly chatter, or I have only to sit next to them, then I am free of all weariness and listlessness, and I can go back to work refreshed. It was written with regards to Hitler's attitude to Gailey Raubel that, the affection Hitler felt for this pretty, superficial niece, soon developed into a passionate relationship, hopelessly burdened by his intolerance, his romantic ideal of womanhood. It was also said of Gailey that, she looks more like a child than a girl. You couldn't call her pretty exactly, but she had a great natural charm. She usually went without a hat and wore plain clothes, pleated skirts and white blouses. No jewellery except a gold swastika was given to her by Uncle Adolf, whom she called Uncle Alf. Rumours began to emerge about Hitler's relationship with his niece, and he said to his photographer, I'm so concerned about Gailey's future that I feel I have to watch over her. I love Gailey and could marry her. I want to remain single. I retain the right to exert an influence on her circle of friends until such a time when she finds the right man. I want to stop her falling in the hands of someone unsuitable. She would accompany Hitler to many meetings, and some of these were very high profile too. Hitler youth leader Baudel von Chirac wrote of Gailey that the girl at Hitler's side was of medium size, well developed, had dark, rather wavy hair. A flush of embarrassment reddened the round face as she entered the room with him. It was simply astonishing to see a young girl at Hitler's side. He chatted animatedly to her, patted her hand, and scarcely paused long enough for her to say anything. I had the impression Gailey would have liked to stay longer. But as Hitler was continuing his stranglehold and control over the Nazi party, he was becoming more dominating and controlling in his relationship with his half-niece. It's clear he had a romantic relationship with her, and while she was living inside of his apartment, he controlled what she did and where she could go, and also who she could see. This made her ultimately Hitler's first victim of his control, and her mother also became concerned about Hitler. She stated that after the war, Hitler had banned Gailey from seeing a man from Linz, who was hoping to marry her, and it's believed this was done from pure jealousy on Hitler's behalf. But Gailey Raubel did have a relationship 
with one of the men closest to Hitler. Emil Maurice was his chauffeur, and it was found out in December 1927 that Galey and Maurice were having a relationship, and Hitler outraged, sacked Maurice from his position, and then banned Galey Rabel from seeing him. Following this, Hitler refused to allow her to mix with any of his friends, and allowed only those who he trusted to chaperone her to shopping trips and excursions to the opera and the cinema. With this, he was controlling all of her life. The couple lived together in this manner for years, but then Hitler's eye was stolen by another young girl, the 17-year-old Ava Brown, who Hitler took for rides in his Mercedes. Ava worked in a studio of his personal photographer and would eventually marry Hitler in the final days of his life. Gailey also disliked much of Hitler's behaviour, including his violent side. Following the emergence of Maurice and Raubel's relationship, it was said, when Hitler found out, there was such a scene that Maurice feared Hitler was going to shoot him. There was a claim that Gailey also fell in love with another man, whose identity is not known, and that this man wrote to her in 1931. It was said the power that Hitler held over Gailey and her mother was total, and because of this, Hitler's egotistical behaviour would not allow a match. It was said she did not like his controlling nature, and as time went on she got bored with him at times. But whilst living as a prisoner inside his home, she wished to escape to Vienna to continue her singing lessons. Hitler insisted that she and her friend had weapons training to protect themselves, and they were told to carry loaded pistols, and she was regularly taken outside of Munich to practice. But Gailey would continue to complain about her uncle's behaviour, and he slandered her Jewish singing teacher, who it's believed Gailey wanted to have a relationship with. She wished greatly to run to Vienna, possibly with this teacher, to start a life and have a baby, and Hitler was furious at this. He, in his close inner circle, believed that Gailey Raubel knew too much about the future dictator of Germany, and because of this, letting her run free into the world was considered too dangerous. It's believed she could have told the world about Hitler's sexual habits, in his close personal life, and Hitler feared this information being leaked to the press would destroy him. However, on the morning of the 19th of September 1931, Gailey Raubel's lifeless body was found inside of Hitler's Munich flat on the floor of her room by Hitler's housekeeper, George Winter. He gave a statement to the police that said, As the thing seemed to me rather suspicious, at 10 o'clock I forced the double door open with a screwdriver. As I'd opened the door, I stepped into the room and found Raubel lying on the floor as a corpse. She had shot herself. I can't give any reason why she should have shot herself. However, evidence would later emerge that would cast Raubel's death in rather suspicious light. She had shot herself in the lung with Hitler's own pistol, and at the age of 23 was dead, a victim of Hitler's controlling behaviour and nature. He had departed his apartment for a meeting in Nuremberg, and was summoned back when the news broke that Gailey Raubel was dead. A number of high-ranking Nazis debated what should happen before the police were taken to Hitler's apartment. A high-ranking Nazi conference was held in Hitler's flat following her death, and following this, Bolder von Schirach informed the press that Hitler had gone into deep mourning for the death of his niece. But the Nazis, with the body still in the room, debated what the best course of action was to take. A report was made that said... According to a police communique, a 23-year-old student fired a pistol aimed at the heart in a room of her flat in the Bogenhausen district. The unfortunate young woman, Angela Raubel, was the daughter of Adolf Hitler's half-sister, and she and her uncle lived on the same floor of a block of flats on Prince Regenplatz. On Friday afternoon, the owners of the flat heard a cry, but it did not occur to them that it came from their tenant's room. When there was no sign of life from this room in the course of the evening, the door was forced. Angela Raubel was found lying face down on the floor dead. Near her on the sofa was a small calibre Volfa pistol. However, as soon as the news emerged, there was great speculation regarding the death of Gailey Raubel, and whether she was executed, murdered, or whether her death was a result of foul play. The Munchener Post would carry a story that said, On Friday 18th of September, there was once again a violent quarrel between her Hitler and his niece. What was the reason? The vivacious 23-year-old music student Gailey wanted to go to Vienna. She wanted to become engaged. Hitler was strongly opposed to this. The two of them had recurrent disagreements about this. After a violent scene, Hitler left his flat on the second floor of 16 
Prince Regent Platz. The dead woman's nose was broken, and there were other serious injuries on the body. From a letter to a female friend living in Vienna, it is clear that Fraulein Gailey had the firm intention of going to Vienna. The letter was never posted. Raubel's body, it's claimed, was found with a fractured nose, which would, it's assumed, have been the result of a violent argument that broke out between Hitler and Raubel. In the evening before her death, it was heard that a huge argument broke out between the two, and in the aftermath of it, lay Gailey Raubel, the young 23-year-old woman, dead on the floor. Hitler went against the narrative, saying, It is untrue that I had either recurrent disagreements or a violent quarrel with my niece Angela Raubel on Friday the 18th of September or previously. It is untrue that I was strongly opposed to my niece's travelling to Vienna. The truth is I was never against the trip my niece had planned. It is untrue that my niece wanted to become engaged in Vienna or that I had some objection to my niece's engagement. The truth is that my niece, tortured by anxiety about whether she really had the talent necessary for a public appearance, wanted to go to Vienna in order to have new assessment of her voice by a qualified voice specialist. It is untrue that I left my flat on the 18th of September 1931 after a violent scene. The truth is there was no kind of scene and no agitation of any kind when I left my flat on that day. But the speculation persisted. It was even brought into question whether Hitler had ordered her execution and death because of the fact that she may have been pregnant with the baby of a Jewish singing teacher. The police doctor who signed the death sentence would confirm that she died from a gunshot to the lung and that she did have discoloration on her face, but it was said that this came from the fact she had laid face down on the floor for around 18 hours. The bullet had pierced her lung and had missed her heart, and it was said, when the shot was fired, the barrel of the pistol was pointing downwards, and the hand holding it higher than her heart. Even if she was lying on the couch or the floor, it would not have been easy for her to shoot herself in this way, and why would she want to? Having been taught how to use a Volfa, she could. If she wanted to kill herself, she easily could have, and avoided such a slow and painful death. There was no inquest into Gailey Rabble's death, and many of her close friends and family could not work out why she allegedly took her own life, and some even claimed she may have done this accidentally whilst playing with Hitler's pistol. The pretext to her death could not be ignored, and many of the enemies of the Nazis alleged that Hitler had organised her death and murder. For example, a French newspaper stated they pretended that she committed suicide. I should never have allowed a suicide to be buried in consecrated ground. From the fact I gave her a Christian burial, you can draw conclusions which I cannot communicate to you. This was said by the priest who presided over her funeral. Many believed that Gailey Raubel did not die by her own hand, and Rudolf Hess even believed that she had been shot by a jealous woman who broke into Hitler's flat late that evening. There were rumours that even Himmler visited and screamed at Raubel shortly before her death. However, what cannot be disputed is the control and horrific measures that Hitler went to restrict Gailey Rabel's life. He was a jealous lover of his niece, which in itself is bizarre, and it's clear that without this relationship with her uncle Adolf, that she would never have ended up dead at the young age of 23, inside of a Munich flat. Whether she was executed or murdered for knowing too much about Hitler, or whether she was shot after a devastating row, or even that she took her own life, the story of Gailey Raubel is an incredibly sad one, and many parts of it remain untold. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.